a sad death in New York City. Surveillance cameras at a city-run psychiatric hospital emergency room in Brooklyn capture a woman falling from a chair, writhing on the floor, and dying. Hospital staff and other patients watch and do nothing for more than an hour. One guard doesn't even leave his chair, rolling it around the corner to stare at the body. The city's medical examiner has yet to determine why the woman, 49-year-old Esmond Green, died on June 20th. She had been waiting in the emergency room for nearly 24 hours. The reason why this woman died the way she did is because there is a culture of indifference to patients that permeates every aspect of KCHC's psychiatric care. Surveillance video eventually shows a member of the medical staff attending to Green. But it's too late. She has already died. The Esmond Green video really impacted our youth group, and I don't think we'll ever be the same. I walked into the main building that night because it was when our class was still downstairs in the old couch room. When I was walking through the foyer, I saw two guys on a bench, and they looked kind of lost, like they were waiting for someone. I was so nervous that I didn't say anything and walked right past them. I wondered if they just didn't know where class was, though, and so I turned around and walked up to them. I said, are y'all waiting for someone? And they said, yes. I don't remember if I asked them who they were waiting for, but it was Abby Earhart. The three of them walked into Bible class shortly after that. Class was so small that night because of the meeting, and I felt bad that we were going to have such an awesome lesson with only about 12 people to hear it. I remember Philip talking about this woman where she came in and she needed help. She was in a hospital and dying, but no one was there to even help her. And it made me really think about our youth group. Our youth group used to be a lot like school, frankly. You, you'd show up to class and you'd see a click here and a click there and you know this person belongs to that group and I belong to this group and well they just didn't mix and that's the way things were. You had one area was the jocks, another area were the populars. It was all filled with that and we all had boundaries where all right, people, certain people sat here, certain people sat here. We were very distant from each other. When a visitor would walk in, somebody might say hi to them, and, or maybe they wouldn't even be talked to at all. We were also afraid of each other at times. I remember thinking that there were certain groups of people that I wasn't supposed to talk to. We had created boundaries within the group, making it awkward and uncomfortable to talk to people we saw on a weekly basis. This lesson just put it directly in front of our faces that we were neglecting people as the widows were being neglected in Act 6 or the way that Esmond Green was negle neglected in the waiting room and well in her case she died because no one cared to check on her and it was brought to our attention that in our own youth group if you want to call it that it was hardly a group at this time was neglecting people in the same way just turning a blind eye to those who needed attention. It sounds like a harsh lesson, but I don't think it hurt anyone's feelings. In fact, people who were frequently left out were nodding in agreement with everything he said. What it did was hurt our hearts enough to make a change. The lesson that night made me really consider how many people that have came into our youth group who had came in there for help, who really needed it, who were practically dying because they were just they could have been so upset or they needed help but none of us were helping any of them and I can also remember that it made me also think how many times that I've came in there and I've felt the same way and if I felt that bad I can't imagine a perfectly stranger coming in and feeling that way. It was brought to my attention that one of the worst things you can do to someone is nothing. <laughs> I know that may not make a lot of sense to some of you, but turning turning a blind eye to a guest or a visitor or even just someone who looks like they're not having the best day can be detrimental. Jesus didn't just die for me. He died for the lunch ladies at school. He died for the guest who just walked in that door that I neglected to even say hi to 
because I was too caught up on, too caught up with my own life. And that's terrible because this could be the only chance, the only chance that they get to see Christ. And that's just too big of an opportunity to pass up. We were comfortable with where we were until we realized the severity of what we were doing. It has had a huge impact on my life almost every day since. Because of it, our youth group has changed a whole lot about who we are. Visitors don't leave without getting talked to, and sometimes I think we even overwhelm them. But we love them and we love each other. We've gone from being a youth group with a bunch of cliques to a family that I'm pretty sure would do anything for each other. It has grown each of us so much spiritually. The truth is, that class has affected everyone here whether they know it or not. Since we heard the Esmond Green story, our youth group has probably doubled in size, and we had to buy this building, which has been a huge blessing from God. I think it's very rare that a guest does not get greeted by at least ten people, nine of which they may not remember the name of, but that's great. It made me think, well, what can I do to, to help or save lost souls? I thought, well, what can I do in my future? I think, I, th I think I've decided to be a youth minister when I grow up because I really enjoy doing things like that and trying to help people. There will always be something we can work on, but we have come so far and that is what impacts me the most. And those two guys that I met in the four year waiting for Abby two years ago are now my brothers in Christ. We love you, Chris and Alex. The Esma Green video you showed me two years ago really impacted my life because I was struggling with the idea of neglect for a long time and then going to the youth group for the first time, even going to church for the first time really showed that, okay, this is a good thing I can try and possibly it could help me with my problems of neglect. And so really that first night opened the doors for me to give church and Christianity a real try. And I'm really glad that I did it. It helped my life in many ways and it ultimately ended up helped saving my life. And so for that very first lesson, it was the start of something incredible. And the only thing I can say more than that was just thank you, really. Thank you for showing me the idea that I could overcome neglect and thank you for giving me a chance to show how much I can grow.